Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our morning meditations where we're working our way through one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning and evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Now, yesterday we looked at the reading from Ecclesiastes and talked in general about the book Ecclesiastes as one of those three philosophies of life uh, that we can see in Scripture. Job, life is suffering, uh, Song of Songs, life is love, uh, and then, of course, uh, Ecclesiastes, life is vanity. So, of course, I hope that you're continuing to read through those lessons. Uh, and we'll get back to St. Matthew's Gospel, uh, which we've been working, mostly working our way through the last couple of weeks. But I do want to talk a little bit about today's lesson from uh, St. Paul's letter to Timothy, uh, remembering that the epistles are written generally to the communities that St. Paul has founded. But in this particular case, we have two of the epistles that are written to an individual, Timothy, uh, as well as we have a letter to Titus as well, in which we have, oh, and Philemon, uh, where St. Paul is writing to an individual to help them in their ministry. Uh, Timothy was obviously one of uh, Paul's assistants, who Paul then sends off to help and to help to firm up the faith uh, in the church in that town while Paul is elsewhere planting and firming up uh, the church. He has two letters that are in the scriptures, and the church obviously felt that these contained so much important information that they, like the letters to the various communities, began sharing these letters among themselves, and they were added to the canon of scripture when the canon of scripture was finally codified. Uh, so the, we're in the second letter of Paul to Timothy, uh, and we're at a lesson that if you watch our weekday services, uh, you'll say this is really familiar because it is frequently assigned to uh, less to various saints uh, who are leaders in the church. Uh, and so here is what it says, uh, 2 Timothy 4. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Uh, and then he goes on. So this is important because even though Paul is writing this in particular to Timothy, who's performing a, a leadership ministry, we would say it would be probably the equivalent of being a priest and then a bishop leading that community. Uh, this is equally true and important for all of us in the church. Paul is reminding Timothy that he is to be vigilant and diligent in speaking and preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's his entire existence. But we as, as members of the body of Christ, both ordained and lay people, are called to share the good news of God in Jesus Christ in all circumstances, right? Be in season and out of season, right? Woe to me as a priest if the only time I talk about Jesus is on Sunday morning uh, or when I'm doing these morning meditations. He has to be the focus and foundation of my entire life, uh, and I have to look for the opportunities to share the good news about him. Uh, but of course, there's this additional warning that he's giving to him, and I think this is a, certainly an astute observation of not only the, our fallen human nature, uh, but the reality of the trickery of the devil himself, who will try to get us to move away from the fullness and the soundness of the faith. Uh, when he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned towards fables, right? And so unfortunately, even within the church, uh, much of our division uh, of the churches is because people could not endure sound doctrine. And much of our disagreements from within the church also have to do with the same thing. Um, you know, I, how often in early on in my ministry was I stunned to hear people when you would say, well, the scriptures say this, and they would say, yeah, but we know better now. We really do know better than the saints. We really do know better than the revelation of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and scriptures. I don't think so. Uh, the reality is, is that we cannot judge the scriptures by our experience. Rather, 
we need to have our experience be not only formed by the scriptures, but where our experience is contrary to the scriptures and the teaching of the tradition of the church as well, because the scriptures are a part of that as, as well, our lives need to be changed and transformed by that, not the other way around, right? It, it, we don't preach with the, with the Bible in one hand and the New York Times in the other and decide that the New York Times is more important because it's more relevant. Um, we, we read the New York Times through the eyes of the scripture and it helps us to be discerning about what is good and what is evil. And then ultimately it's the scriptures that is our authority about that. Um, even if we're tempted to lean towards things that are hard for us, that lean towards things that would convict us and convince us of sin, right? Just because we have a majority vote on any circumstance does not mean that sin is no longer sin, right? God doesn't work by polling. Uh, so I, I hope, brothers and sisters, that, that even as hard as this is, as hard as this sounds to us, this is ultimately how God would have us live and he's given us the ability to do so uh, following his holy word. He will give us all the grace necessary to amend our lives rather than somehow try to think that we should amend the scriptures. It, it doesn't work that way. So that's our morning meditation for this Friday. Um, I hope that you have a good day. I hope that you are learning to love Jesus more and more and that you are going to uh, cooperate with his grace as he changes you into the saint he desires you to be. May God bless you.